Hello, this is a note uh, continuing on our series of using uh, a numerical uh, weather prediction forecast, model forecast in GRIB format. I want to look now at um, how to identify a weather fronts on a GRIB, on a model output. And uh, the reason that's an issue is because they are not drawn in. Here we have, uh, this is, I just now downloaded this for the Pacific Ocean this minute or a few minutes ago. And here's a case for the Pacific. And we see these fronts. Here's this warm front and I'm followed by a cold front. And the lows moving this way and these things will stream behind it somehow. And this is occluding and presumably, uh, what's it doing? 61. It's, this thing is deep. Deepening is getting deeper, so this is probably going to occlude more. And then we can go over here and see tw this is a 48 hour, this is like 18Z today, this is 12Z tomorrow, and you see this huge occlusion and this, this big uh, wraparound uh, uh, system here. Um, and, and so forth. But now the question is, how do we and, we, and it's always good to look at these, by the way. That's a, you, if you're getting the GRIB files, you're getting the GRIB files by your HF radio or your satellite phone, you can always get these maps. And this is, uh, these graphic maps are always valuable to look at. But in the end, though, we want to work with the GRIB files because we do, that's how this digital, we can do routing, or optimum routing, and so forth. But okay, so let me move these for the time being. And then I'm, I'm, I'm using, here I'm using LUC GRIB. I've downloaded this GRIB GFS uh, GRIB file for three or four days. Well, here it is, uh, one, two, three days, four days. And, uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to zip up these two pictures and this GRIB file and put it so you can download it and show it in a, a GRIB viewer of your choice. Um, I'm using a Mac and so the, this, uh, uh, this luck GRIB is very handy. So, uh, so here's that. But again, you can put it in any one and if we have time, we'll come back and look at some other viewers. All right, so here's the case. So here's the, if you were just looking at the wind, now this is starting at 12Z. Our map, our first map is actually at 18Z, you know, somewhere uh, like here is the first map. But let's just look at this and just say how, and, and what we're looking at first is just the wind. And you see, you almost, now again, you can sometimes see this in the wind if this, uh, these are really nice strong fronts. If these are nice strong fronts, you'll see it in the wind. And here we do see the wind picking up. This is the low, we see the low here. Now back here, you didn't even really see much of the low. A little low is developing and some activity here. And you also see a little bit of a kink in the isobars here. But for now, just look at the wind. And you see the wind along this front. We know when a front goes by, there's going to be a big veer in the wind. Uh, and so if you watch that wind there, now the, you can see the thing getting deeper. This low was 999. Now it's down to 980 something. 970. And you see, watch the wind right in this area here. Uh, you'll see that do that. Now another, another way to look at it with, with these programs is if, if you wanted to, you could go and put a mediogram like this. Now where is that? Let me put that about right here, say, and then come back. And um, here is the pressure. And you expect when the front goes by, the pressure to be the lowest, and the wind should be sometimes pick up, uh, be the most, and then it should veer. And this blue line is showing where we are in there. And you see, look, the, the actual veer of the front is taking place after there, but you see it up here. Here's this, the wind is definitely getting bigger, and then here's the, uh, uh, here's the huge veer from the south, more or less the south to more like southwest. So there's the veer like that. And so you can, you can see that there. But so we can see that in the wind, but, uh, um, another way to enhance looking at the fronts is look at the isobars. You see, we almost see the little kink here in the isobars, and a little bit maybe here, this way. But remember, these GRIB programs, that's the beauty of the, all this digital stuff, 
is that we can go into these and let's just change the spacing. See, number four, these, these isobars here, the standard spacing is four isobars. That's the standard spacing. And the default here is four isobars. But we can tweak this. We can go in here. Whoops, that's not it. Um, here. And we can go in and make this one, uh, one isobar, say. One isobar. Like that. Now you see... Um, you can see this a little bit better, maybe. You see this behavior down here. Or, I mean, you can get, f you, well, why, why stop at one? Um, let's just go, in. now again, I, all programs are going to have a little bit different functionality here. This one, I think I can actually go down to there. Yeah, okay. So now you're seeing, this is where that front, the actual frontal surface is running. Sort of right down that kink in those isobars. And let me run this a little bit. And so you can, you can see the front is like right along in there and right along in there. Okay, so that's playing with the isobars. There's, I just want to show several ways to do this. Let me get this back to normal, which is four. Oh no, well, let me go back to two, that's okay, two. Um, four is a standard, and we need to know the standard because it comes into play. Um, but, um, uh, comes into play. Okay, so there's that, and now again we can sort of see this front here. Again, weaker. Fr I'm going to show different techniques. This one's a real strong front. We see it easily just with a wind. And uh, but now let's go look at uh, the isobar. Let's look at the rain, for example. The rain. Uh, I'm going to take the color shading off of the wind, off of the wind, and put it on the rain. Say. Yeah, like that. Now we're seeing the rain here, and uh, you see you have, I don't know how much do we see. We see a little bit more. You can almost see the system. Here is the, um, the warm front coming down here. And remember, the warm front, the rain is all out in front of the warm front. So the front is right behind it. Well, you see the isobar here, right? The fr and you see where the veer is, bang. Bang, bang. So this, all this is that long extended lowering of the stratus clouds in front of the warm front, out here in front. From here, this is a front, out here. Out here is the lowering of the clouds and so forth. And right along here, notice very narrow, that's a cold front, and that's, those clouds are all narrow and raining, so forth. So that's one way you see. And then look here, like there are things all occluded and all just one big long tail, it looks like. Okay. Uh, what do we have next? We got the rain. Oh, and here's something now that's really probably better than rain. Let's go and look at the simulated radar reflectivity. Uh, simulated radar. This is a new function. It's a global property uh, you can get with a GFS anywhere in the world and is probably the best way to forecast squalls. And let me refer you to our textbook on how to do that. How to interpret the squalls based on the gradient. and the, These colors, these uh, color patterns have a standard in this particular item. The other ones, the you know, the rain and the fog and the clouds and various other things, this has a standard color bar. Okay, I'm not sure this pr uh, program here, LuckGrib, is matching that standard color bar, but you could force it. You can redesign the color bar and make it match. Anyway, so here now we're looking at the simulated radar reflectivity. And so we learn, you know, what are we learning? A little bit. Get another picture of how, in other words, if I have to locate where that front is, I still have got to my knowledge that that thing is going to veer. And if you look at the wind on the back side of this, You'll see that bang. You see that big veer right there. Okay, so that's another way to look at it. But now let's come into what it might be a trick play. Uh, go here, and I've downloaded this because I wanted to do the trick play if it works. I'm going to look at the relative humidity at 850 millibars. That's at the boundary layer. Now, you see, this This is a way to get a pretty, whoa, whoa, what is that? Okay, sorry. Um, now, th now you see a little more prominent demarcation of the fronts right there. You see that? You can almost see them run just like on the map. So anyway, keep that in mind. That's 800, uh, 850 millibars, boundary layer, 850 millibar elevation. That's a 1,015, 
1,500 feet, somewhere up there, and uh, where the pressure is 850, and then look at the relative humidity. And let's see, did I want to say anything else? No, and then you could put in here, again, and the mediogram, the, mo most of the programs will have some form of mediogram. This one is here. And where is the center? Okay, it's here. So if I put this like here, let me put it here, and then just move that front across that mediogram, and that's the blue line. And you see, watch up in here, you see, and, and here's where I'm looking, right here at this target point. And I move this through, and then right there at the tail, at the right there, is, there's the veer. So this, it's interesting, you can study this. You'll see that the veer is taking place sort of right in the center of the cold front. Right in the center of the cold front. There's the isobars kinking up going by. But if you look at the warm front over here, I'm guessing it's going to be on the back. Let me just see here. Uh, well, it's a little hard to... This is an occluded front. It's a little hard to tell because it could be warm or cold. Uh, but in this case, you see the veer. See that? There's the veer. Is at the back side of the back side? It's raining and the clouds are lowering, and the veer is going to take place right as the front goes by in the back. Okay, there's some exercises. I'm going to pack up, zip up these data so you can play with it in your own uh, in your program of choice. We've done. Uh, you've got. Um, Expedition, you can load this in Expedition, has a lot of nice display options in Expedition if you use that. We also have a XY grib, we've done samples of that, and QTVLM. QTVLM will be a nice way. Oh, one other thing, let me just show some if I have it running here. Let's just show one last thing you can do. This is OpenCPN which is not, not, not really the most versatile for looking at grib files, but you can do um, you, you can do, uh, you can load images. So if I do the weather facts plugin, now where is it? Oh, okay, it's over here. And then I'm gonna retrieve from the internet. And I'm going to go, let's see, up here to NOAA Pacific, take the color analysis and load it. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, okay, so now it's loaded a geo-reference version of that same map I just showed you. In fact, this one right here, it just loaded it geo-reference. Now you can go to their uh, grib, um, their grib, okay, and I loaded the grib just a while ago. So now this is, um, this map is at 18Z. Uh, let's just see what we're looking at here. Here's 18Z. Okay, so now then you can study the grib file right overlaid on this. And again, then play with the various overlays. This looks like it's rain. If you're doing OpenCPN, you would go in here, click data, click uh, rain. Let's see, I think that's probably rain. I didn't actually set that. Yeah, that's an overlay of rain. Yeah, let me move this. And see, you can play with it that way. Right, see that? Now, I don't, uh, okay, I'll let it go. I'm not sure this one will show the reflectivity, but um, it's, it's different ways to look at fronts inside of a grip file.